let's talk about three free agency moves that we hate so far. Well, three more, because we've already done one video on that. So let's talk about three more free agencies that we hate. And before we get started on that, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos just like this one. All right, Kyle, let's get to that hate list. Who's number one? Yeah, man, number one's Calvin Ridley uh, going to the Titans. He already, you know, he misses a couple years, comes back. You're like, oh, you still got juice in the tank. He had kind of a rough year with Trevor Lawrence down with Jacksonville this year. And now he gets a QB downgrade and is also playing across from D-Hop. I don't think that production goes up. <laughs> if anything, it'll go down lateral at best. So not in love with that landing spot uh, for Calvin Ridley. I agree. There was a lot of hype around Ridley uh, this last offseason, you know, all the camp talk, watching the videos and doing that. And really, he had a couple good games uh, there in Jacksonville, but he was the number two wide receiver um, behind Christian Kirk still. So um, not sure how excited I am about him going, like I said, competing for targets uh, with, with D-Hop. And who knows how Traylon Burks actually comes along. But then the quarterback downgrade – it really hurts him. And this, the identity of this offense has been Derrick Henry for so long. Mm -hmm. And I know they just signed Tony Pollard and they have Tajay Spears, but it's nothing like the attention that, that Derrick Henry just demanded. And so it's going to be interesting to see how will Levis and that in offense adjust to that in the coming year. And who knows, maybe they're leaning less on the run. So there are more passes to go around. But also those those DBs don't have to play up so tight because Derrick Henry's not there. So yeah, I mean, I think it's clear. New coaching staff, new philosophy on this offense. They're wanting to shift from being quite so run heavy. They still want to run the ball. You don't sign a Tony Pollard and stuff and have a Ty J Spears without wanting to run the ball. But I think they're wanting their identity to be a little more balanced, a little more pass happy, maybe. They've got the receivers for it. I don't know if Levis is that guy to elevate that, though. Yep, I agree. All right, who's the second one on your list? Uh, number two, Mr. Deontay Johnson. Um, it's Carolina, man. Like, of, of every place he could have gone, I, I feel like that's one of the worst. Like, yeah, he was already on a bad offense with bad quarterbacks. And then he goes to another bad offense with a uh, to-be-determined quarterback, but last year wasn't promising. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't trust that Bryce Young is that guy to keep Deontay in the elite tier wide receivers for fantasy, or to return him to that tier. I guess I should say. <laughs> yeah, Deontay just can't win, right? He has to play with a horrible quarterback, and then. They finally bring in Russell Wilson. Not great, but an upgrade. And then they ship Deontay out of town to go play with the Panthers. Um, God, I feel bad for the guy. Um, but you've mentioned on multiple occasions how good of a route runner Deontay Johnson is and how he just gets open, right? Yeah. Now, Bryce Young could easily lean on him. We saw him lean on Adam Thielen last year. Deontay Johnson could be that guy for him this year. He has a very good knack for getting open. So there's possibility there, but I just don't hope have hope for that offense in general. It's just, it's struggling, right? And does that mean Bryce Young is bad? Not necessarily, but you know, you put CJ Stroud on that team and he's not thriving like he is on the Texans, right? Like that, that offense is just not great that team is not great so um not a great situation for Deontay I'm not getting my hopes up by any means for anyone on that on that offense right I mean the running game is okay with Chuba Hubbard Fine. um I yeah I just great route runner or not I'm letting somebody else take that chance and redraft next year I'm passing um in dynasty I'm probably trying to sell for somebody that does believe he can be what Thielen was, yep. you know, that can be that lean on guy. But if I have him in dynasty, I'm, I'm definitely trying to sell. Cause I don't, it'll, he's already 27. It'll take him a couple years to kind of build that rapport with Bryce young. I'm not waiting on that. Get rid of him. Get somebody you can use now. I agree. 
All righty. Who's your third and final one? Third and final one, Mr. Justin Fields getting traded for a washing machine to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The washing machine to be the backup to Russell Wilson, at least initially. Um, and we don't really know, you know, will he start games this year? Will he overtake Russ? Will he just sit behind Russ for a, a complete year or two and then take over? We don't know for sure. Again, somebody else, I'm letting somebody else take that risk and redraft next year unless you can get him real late. I'm talking super late. Dynasty, kind of the same thing. Um, if you've got a starting and he's your backup already, okay, you can afford to wait and see what happens in a year or two or whatever. But I'm not rushing out to buy him. I don't like him on an Arthur Smith offense. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have a ton of great weapons there to use. A lot of red flags, yeah. Well, yeah, there's a lot of issues I have with him being there for sure. Yeah, Justin Fields is a perfect illustration of an Ohio State quarterback. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. I mean, um, he, he illustrates the difference between real-life production and fantasy production, right? Um, Justin Fields gets great fantasy football production you know, lots of yards on his feet, scoring touchdowns, running the ball, scrambling stuff. Oh, love it. Love it for my fantasy team. But it does not translate to wins on the real football field. And now we're kind of getting to see the result of that is him taking a back seat to Russell Wilson. And that that hurts us in fantasy football. But again, there's that disconnect, right? We had the same uh, thing with Tim Tebow back in the day. Oh, loved having him on my fantasy team. He was racking up points left and right, but they weren't winning games on the field in real life. So um, this is kind of a perfect illustration of that. Uh, I'll be curious to see how long it takes Justin Fields to actually get that starting position or how long he actually has to sit behind Russell Wilson and, and learn. So this might be good for him in real life, but for dynasty owners of Justin Fields, it's a sad day. Yeah. Yeah. Um... It could end up being something similar to the Falcons where Arthur Smith was next year, where we flip-flopped between Taylor Heineke and Desmond Ritter back and forth, back and forth. Are we going to see that with Russell and Fields? Are they both going to have super short leash? Russell's not the guy he was back in the day either. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch, but I'm not risking it on my team. No, thanks.